Something like that, guys. Well, there's another. Imagine that. Yuck, cold, gray, gloomy, depressing, slit your wrists kind of Monday morning here in the end times. As one of the biggest depressions in how many years starts to settle back over me here on it is the day after National Mental Health Day yes the day after National Mental Health Day as I am uh, sitting here thinking about my life here on Monday morning October 11th 2021 and I'm quite sure everybody knows who has followed this channel knows what today is but it is really a special day and we're not talking about uh, you know whatever that <coughs> dude who uh, supposedly discovered America uh, that's a whole nother round now I am talking about it is National Ham Sandwich Day today. It was 31 years ago today that uh, I bid farewell to my dear sweet ex-wife over the infamous ham sandwich episode, which I've already told how many times I'm not going to <coughs> repeat the infamous ham sandwich episode 31 years ago. So it was pretty close as I was born on September 22nd, 62 years ago, pretty much to the day one half of my life ago. It was, I have, uh, and Lord, half of my life since uh, <laughs> that infamous day in Sweet Home, Oregon, where <coughs> we had gone to save our sour marriage, and uh, <laughs> oh well, didn't quite work out that way, but uh, you know, it's got me to thinking, and uh, some comments I received two comments uh, within an hour of each other a few days ago. Uh, one from Dulcinea herself. Uh, her comment was, are there something, I think her comment was, are there really 50 ways to leave your lover? And someone else made another comment about that Paul Simon song. 50 ways to leave your lover and uh, or your no longer lover uh, so what what do you call someone who's no longer your lover hasn't been your lover for years but you just can't just can't leave them this this whole thing about and I'm as guilty as anyone. Good God, how how long did that fucking marriage of mine drag on when it should have been put out of its misery years before? I mean, well, we never should have gotten married. But uh, just this whole, the whole notion of leaving a bad relationship. And I would almost throw, uh, I will throw, uh, it, it's, it's not just relationships with other people. Uh, that's the main one, but I would throw in also leaving a job, leaving just any situation that is no longer working in your life. It's clear you know <clears throat> in both your head and your heart, usually your head, knows before your heart that it is a bad situation that you need to get out of. Usually the heart is to blame. Uh, 
for sticking around in a in a bad situation. Uh, not always, but it, it's not like you wake up uh, one morning, you, you, like you go to bed the, the night before and it was a good situation and you wake up the next morning and you understand in your head and your heart that it's a bad situation uh, and that you can just walk out of it. It's, uh, it's, What's that Mary Gaucher song, The Slippery Slope of Falling Out of Love is a Dangerous Thing. <laughs> falling Out of Love is a Dangerous Thing. The Slippery Slope of Falling Out of Love or, as I say, Leaving a Bad Situation if... and... It would be so nice if the uh, if that Paul Simon song were true. I understand the, what the song was. You know, like in, in, in my case, I didn't slip out the back. I walked out the front. Uh, I walked out the fucking front door. Uh, I got in my fucking truck and I drove off. That's how I did it. Uh, I told the I told the fucking bitch, uh, have the goddamn ham sandwich. Enjoy every fucking bite of the ham sandwich. Uh, walked out the fucking door, got my truck, and drove off. Didn't stop till I got to Costa Rica. Uh, Jesus, but how many people? Uh, living in uh, in these awful marriages, you know, obviously Dulcinea being one of them. Uh, Dulcinea, I, I mean, the first first time I ever talked to her in person, uh, telling me two and a half years ago uh, that she uh, she knew two and a half years ago that she was in the in this trap the last time i saw the girl uh about six weeks ago told me what did she say that she wished uh she needed her own ham sandwich uh episode in her life she, she's known uh, I, I, you, you know, I know she's known in, in her head, at least since, well, her heads, since the day I met her, and uh, I assume that she knows in her heads, her heads, plural, and her heart, uh, that uh, she needs to get out of that trap that she's in, and so we will see. Uh, she turns 50 years old in nine days. Dulcinea turns 50 years old in nine days, and uh, if she doesn't do it, then she ain't gonna do it. But I'm not, you know, I'm not just picking on Dulcinea. I mean, hell, uh, <laughs> I, I, I think we know at least one other woman here in the Doomosphere uh, dealing with the same issue. Uh, Good God, how many people do I know <clears throat> right now stuck in bad marriages uh, and just not being able to fucking cut the cord to some toxic fucking situation? It's the, you know, it, it, it's one of the hardest things that we do as humans. We, you know, it's just, a, it, it's a big fucking hassle. You know, especially if you have, you know, if you have real estate, if you own real estate together, and obviously I don't know anything about this, but if you have kids, hell, even if you have pets together, uh, who gets the fucking dog, who gets the fucking cat, you know, thank God when uh, my dear sweet ex-wife and I, we had already, we had no kids. We were not breeders, thank God. 
uh, just one more reason I, you know, that was the greatest decision I ever made. We didn't have to deal with all of that shit, and we had already sold our house. So, it, yeah, it was kind of easy for me. We, uh, we had no kids to deal with. We had no house to sell. Uh, I had, we had $112,000 in the bank. Uh, in in two nice cars and no debts to pay, uh, so you know I got in my I got in my nice truck. I drove to the bank. I took fifty six thousand dollars out of the bank and headed to Costa Rica for for uh, what was it four months. Came back, you know I I had real estate licenses in two states, so obviously. Uh, that part of it uh, made it a lot easier for me to walk out of uh, that trap than it would be, for instance, Dulcinea, who is obviously, obviously, uh, Dulcinea is incapable of holding down a job and making an income, so... <clears throat> You know, I mean, she's and, and and it's true of it. Probably not as true. Obviously, uh, up until recently, it was a lot more true of women. It was a lot harder for women, depending on men, uh, you know, to 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 buy their damn groceries. Uh, so, but but even even without being financially dependent on somebody. What a fucking trap that must be. Uh, to be financially dependent on somebody else, depending on somebody else to fucking feed, house, and clothe you, for God's sake. I have, uh, I, well, you know, I mean, except when I was a little kid. You know, I moved out when I was 17. I, I have never... You know, since I was well, 16 years old, pretty much, I have never been financially dependent uh, on on another person to uh, to feed me. Thank God that that, that feeling, Jesus. Uh, but but above and beyond that, just this whole fucking what. Is it? Why is it so fucking hard for people uh, when they know they're in a bad situation? Uh, and and obviously, fear of the fu the the fear that leaving one bad situation is only going to get you into a worse situation. I'm assuming, obviously, that is uh, that is the the number one fear that I that I'm fucked now, but uh, I, I could be a lot more fucked if I leave this situation. I, I mean, how many times have I said the reason uh, I don't commit suicide? As, as much as I despise my fucking life, as miserable and depressed and mentally ill and everything else that I am, the, you, you, you know, the, if, if, if I could be 100% sure that my mother uh, was right and, and, and it's just lights out when you, when you die, uh, I would have been dead years ago. It's the fear that I will be reincarnated as a sub-Saharan African baby in the 21st century is the only reason I haven't killed myself. Is is the fear that 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 is horrible and, 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 and as much as my life sucks and I want it over with, I want this fucking nightmare to end. Uh, the very thought of of you know of, of being a kid in the 21st century in sub-Saharan Africa uh, is the re reason I do this shit. You know, I, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's even, well, at, at the, 
as crazy as this is, uh, I it, it's the well, the fear. This whole thing with Dulcinea, guys, which uh, as she uh, as she knows, uh, it really is coming to a close. I I am ninety nine point nine percent sure today that. In nine days, the very final nail will be put in the Dulcinea coffin. And just, I, I, I was having this conversation with a, w w with a buddy of mine uh, just this weekend about, you know, I, I mean, the, the jury is in. Uh, the jury is unanimous in their verdict particularly anyone <laughs> anyone who has been watching uh, either one of Dulcinea's uh, YouTube channels over the last few weeks, uh, just watching this woman just descend into absolute, just spiraling into, I, I don't know what the proper word for it is. It, I mean, it, it's not funny. There's nothing funny about it. It's tragic, and it's sad, and, and it's ugly as hell. But about anybody uh, going over there to Dulcinea's channel and, and, and watching a few of her videos, you know, the jury is, is unanimous, like Hambone. What the fuck are you thinking? What in the fuck? Uh, would make you uh, take on uh, the burden of, of actually inviting this woman uh, in into your life. You think your life is hell now, Hambone? Uh, and, and my answer was, uh, well, at least Dulcinea would not be boring. She would not be boring. And just uh, if, if, if Dulcinea does not get in the car with me, well, it would be November 18th. Uh, if, 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 if Dulcinea does not get in the truck with me and head off in, into the wild blue yonder, uh, which she's not going to, obviously, she's made it, she's made it clear. Uh, we're just, you know, she's just playing this final little cat and mouse game that we've been playing it's just winding down uh we're both getting bored of it um uh, she's probably moved on with it even more than i have the the woman obviously has a lot more on her mind than i have on mine uh <laughs> so it's not going to happen but just the very thought of uh of taking this trip to nowhere by myself the, the the thought of being alone is more terrifying to me than the thought of being in the company of a mad woman that i would i would rather uh take the risk of the misery that Dulcinea would inflict on me than taking the risk of, of, of just driving around aimlessly for six fucking months with, with, with no fucking anchor in my life. Zero. I mean, just, uh, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm right back where I was 31 years ago today. Pretty much when I got in that truck, and uh, and when I got in that fucking truck on uh, October 11th, 1990, uh, one half of my life ago, and, and drove out of Sweet Home, Oregon. Of course, with fifty six thousand uh, dollars, you know, in my in my pocket, uh, I had no fucking idea where I was spending the night that night. No clue. When I got in that truck, where I was spending the night that night, I I, I had some vague idea 
that uh, I was going to Costa Rica for two weeks with some friends in uh, December. I had a two week, I'd already paid for the trip. Uh, I, I knew that I was going to Costa Rica for two weeks. I, I was homeless, I was unemployed, uh, I, I had absolutely no fucking clue what I was doing uh, for the next two months, you know, until I went down to Costa Rica, no fucking plans what I was doing. I, I, I didn't know what state I was going to be living in. Uh, all I knew is that uh, I, I had that bitch out of my life. That's all I could see is, is getting that goddamn bitch out of my life. And, uh, you know, I've, I've told that story. Uh, you know, when all of my friends, they were heading back to California on, on Christmas Eve, and we, I already had the plane ticket in my hand. We were literally in the Costa Rican airport on Christmas Eve of 19. And I'm there with my friends. We're getting ready to board the plane. And I just all of a sudden had this epiphany. And, and I remember like turning to my friends uh, you know, 30 minutes before we were getting on the fucking airplane, and uh, no, I, I know we were we were checking our baggage. That's why we were getting ready to check our baggage, and uh, uh, we're waiting in the baggage line, and to, to fly back to California. And I just announced, I'm not going back with you. And they said, What are you talking about, Hamon? And I said, I'm staying here. And they said, you're staying in Costa Rica. And uh, I, I did not know one word of Spanish. Uh, I guess I knew the tour guide. Well, I was fucking the tour guide, actually. I thought, <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so uh, you know, so at least uh, I had someone to fuck and, and to speak English for me since I was, since I was already fucking our tour guide uh, for our two-week trip <laughs> to Costa Rica. So uh, I did have that little in, but, uh, but she didn't know. I, I mean, the, the tour guide... Who probably fucked? Uh, the, uh, you, you, you know what I'm saying. She probably fucked every uh, body down the. Uh, 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 but she didn't know I had already uh, kissed her goodbye that morning. You know, and so but so when I walked out of that Costa Rican airport uh, on Christmas Eve of 1990. I walked out, uh, you know, and like the taxi drivers are going, Donde vas, gringo? Uh, no sé. <laughs> uh, talk about uh, a, a Jack Nicholson at the end of Five Easy Pieces. Uh, you know, that classic. That That's the, the best... That might be the, that's right up there with Thelma and Louise is the best movie ending, you know, and Jack Nicholson, I can't remember the name of the character where he walks out on that Karen Black character, uh, I think, didn't Karen Black win the, I think she won the Oscar that year uh, for that performance, and when Jack Nicholson just goes out there and, and uh, gets to the passenger seat of a semi with the shirt on his back and uh, heads out into the fucking rain uh, on, on a semi truck not having any fucking clue where he's headed. And, and that's what uh, I'm that's what I am going to be doing on November 15th is uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hobble together going and visit, visiting a few tribes members uh, on the way out of here. Uh, so, you know, Dulcinea, her deadline 
is uh, her 50th birthday, so uh, if I have not heard from her by October 20th that she's getting in the fucking truck with me, and obviously she's not going to give me a yes or no because she is, she is incapable of making a commitment. I mean, it's. Not, I'm not blaming her. I'm not particular. I, I understand she is mentally ill and does not have the power to make a commitment. So, uh, as much as she knows that, so she is going to choose to stay uh, in that toxic relationship that she's in, 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 in that fucking uh, trap uh, that she's been in uh, for the past 10 years or so. I know goddamn well she's gonna, and, 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 you know, and, and if she would listen to probably about 9 out of 10 of her personalities uh, are, are telling her, don't you dare uh, walk away from, from this fucking meal ticket. That's, uh, she has a fucking meal ticket, uh, you know, and there, there's no fucking way that she's going to leave that. She's just going to spend the rest of her fucking life, uh, just, uh, like, like so many people do. And my guess is it's probably still more women, uh, But regrets, okay, I have half of my life to look back at, do I have any regrets from my decision to leave my bad marriage over a fucking ham sandwich? The answer is no. Things worked out, okay? You can always play the game, what is the worst that can happen here? Will I die? Uh, I guess if you consider death being the worst thing that can happen to you, ask yourself, let your own death be your advisor. This is one of the main lessons from Don Juan Matus. Let your death be your advisor whenever you're, you know, in Dulcinea's position. Uh, whenever you're facing a, you know, you're in a bad situation and you're freaking out about getting in a worse situation by leaving this situation, let your death be your advisor. Say, okay, what is the worst that thing that could happen here? Will it kill me? To make this decision, and uh, if uh, the answer is no to that question, then uh, the answer should be yes to find one of the 50 ways to leave your lover. Um, and then slip out the back, Jack. If only it were that easy. So the so other than you know so I'm using my death as my advisor. So yes, the the uh, getting out of my bad life would kill me. There, there's one solution to uh, the fix I'm in, and that's called suicide. Uh, if the bad situation you're in. Uh, is your whole fucking worthless, pointless existence, then yes, uh, the, uh, the solution uh, is uh, death. <clears throat> so, but, uh, right now, the, the, worst, the, the two worst things in my life are my love affair uh, th th that I never had, uh, e extracting myself from a bad relationship that I never had. I have to say, two and a half years being in a bad relationship 
with a woman that you have actually been in the company of for about 18 hours of your life. This is a weird situation, so I, I need to put the final nail in the Dulcinea uh, ill-fated love affair, and then we got this fucking thing called winter. So, uh, and, uh, and, and the way you get out of winter is heading south. It's called being a snowbird. This is why, uh, either, well, I'm really jealous of all these fucking chipmunks hibernating since I can't as much as I would love to, uh, pull these covers over my fucking head on November 15th and wake up on May 15th. As much as I would absolutely love to that, since hibernation uh, is not available to me, then uh, migration is. So your old climate refugee, uh, your old snowbird climate refugee, will somehow find the fucking energy to uh, hook this trail I gotta think of a new name for the trailer we have to we're gonna the, the trailer's name is the Maggie May I need to think of a I'm changing the name of this trailer on October 20th guys help me think of a new name for this camper please uh, on October 20th and uh, See what six months holds. And then I will be back at Bugs in a Jar around May 15th to start another summer, the summer of 2022. Oh, Jesus. So, slip out the, the back, Jack. Duck in the truck, schmuck, while you still can. Bye, guys.